Ladies and gentlemen, it's happy hour with Marcus. It's the next episode and I am here with an extremely special guest. I am so excited about this episode today. Ra ra ra. In the house we have right here, musician extraordinaire. They call him the Arizona Black Bear. He <laughs> is Rio Wiley in the What's building. Up, guys? What's up? Did you Did get you lost on the way? Anything? Um, um, I actually don't have my car right now. I'm actually using my tour van right now. Oh, so man. even though we're not on tour and we can't tour, I'm still enjoying the luxuries of a tour van. Chilling inside, there's like a lot of space. <laughs> I would say if I could live my whole life in a tour van, I would. I really enjoy being on the road. It's, it's a good time. Man, I would do anything to be on the road right now. COVID, oh gosh. So normally, if you're a viewer of the show, you know we normally do Ciroc. My friend Rio here, he does not like Ciroc. Or maybe you do like Ciroc. Maybe I like Ciroc. Unfair. I'm just partial to gin. Gin. Aviation American Gin. Shout out to Ryan Reynolds. Aviation American Gin. It'll get you f***ed. This Crazy. gin right here. Oh my goodness. I've never tried it yet, so I'm really excited to try it. Let's break this on down. Of course, we have our copper mixer here. Beautiful. First ingredient is lime juice. We've got lime juice here, again, in the This Modern shot glass. Of course, available at thismdrn.com slash shop. Wow. Yup. Simple syrup. We need two ounces of simple syrup. And of course, shout out to Ryan Reynolds. You shout need some out. gin. If you're drinking anything else, you're drinking bullshit. Let's get started here. We're gonna pour the ice. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Nice, hook shot. This is gonna hold both of our drinks today. So, two ounces of simple syrup. Now, I'm not a bartender, but I have been to a lot of clubs. Ooh, 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 oomps, oomps, oomps. All right, that's perfect. Two ounces of the simple syrup, two ounces of lime juice, if you would do me the favor. Next, the most important thing. Shout out our boy Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds! Pikachu. Does he still skate? At Ryan Reynolds, do you still skate? Why aren't you in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2? Jack Reynolds? Black is. Talk to your agent. You need a better agent. <laughs> Hit up my manager, Amy. She's fantastic. Now, four ounces of gin. Two full ones. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A little over oh, the top. Never heard I of. guess it's uh, better to be over the top of the gin than anything else, so. Yeah. That aviation taste. That one was much cleaner. Nice. Now. It is a tradition for you to be able to do the shakery. I'll leave it up to the viewers. Did we fuck up the cops? Oh, we fucked up the cops? All right. Oh my god. That's my bad. It's all good. Professional. Courtesy of Amy, my fantastic manager. Thank you so much. Sometimes this is the worst part. I can't even do it. I think we need to call our special, fr Tim, special friend in. Tim, burrito, Tim. Oh! Just kidding. Just confirm that it's is open. It, is, is it good? We're good. I'll do the string. If, if, if that's okay. Please is that okay? Do. Okay, cool. There's that. Beautiful. We're gonna finish her with the old lime garnish. Wonderful. And there's another one. All right. We're gonna throw a little more gin in there. More gin! Please stand by. Shout out to Ryan Reynolds. We have to cheers. Okay. Oh, wow. Mmm, that's, that's a good. gimlet. I would, I would absolutely give it a 8.5 out of 10. 8.5 out of 10. I've got, I've got five questions for us today. Question number one. Let's let's get into that. You're a teacher, yes. first of all. Yes, I am. What, what do you love about teaching? What what is it? What got you into it? Just give us a little background. My undergraduate degrees are in business, but my master's is in elementary education. And what got me into that was actually I was applying for my MBA at Stanford uh, post uh, post my undergrad. And what happened was I, I actually didn't get through the second interview, didn't know what I was doing, and I found a program called Teach for America. I joined it, it actually helped me uh, get my master's degree and then eventually uh, basically taught me how to be a teacher. And uh, I of course love kids. I've always been a big fan of school. Like school has been one of the things that I've been really blessed to be good at. Um, so that's- and You're very really passionate cool. about it. Thank you, you. yeah. I see you talking about it all the time yeah. online and trying to get that good word out there. Thank you. Yeah. You might not have known this about me, but before I uh, am in my current job, which is dispensary, I, I, my day job is marijuana, but I was an academic well, advisor. 
at Go uh, Mesa Community College. So I was working with high school kids that were trying to get into college, and it's a uh, it's a great feeling. Yeah, like it's, it's, it uh, really is. The best feeling is those like aha moments when the kids like get something and they it, you know it means a lot to them because I think it's crazy to think of the gravity of what people like that do because I can confidently say I've taught over 200 people how to multiply, and that's pretty cool. If you had to summarize, what are the top keys to staying sane during a quarantine? Dude, like absolutely a walk outside, just a good ass walk, just a good ass walk outside, like a really take good, a good ass walk. And, and it's been hard in Arizona because it's been so hot, but taking yeah. taking time outdoors, I think that was one of the things that I, t I took for granted the most was not being able to go outside as much. And so definitely going outside, I think making art is really important, whether you're painting, drawing, singing, um, doing comedy, whatever you're doing, I think making art is really important and therapeutic for that. And then if you're able to, pending that everything's okay and it's safe to see your family, I think seeing family or whoever you are close with, whether it be friends or family, see them uh, to make sure that uh, you have someone to keep you in check, you know? That was amazing, honestly. <laughs> check, check, check. What it's a great to You guys Cheers like, to that. you, should, you can write a book. You can write a freaking book about Thank staying you. sane during a quarantine. Mm. You've put on a, a lot of great shows. Thank you. I've seen a few of them. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, what's the best show that you've ever witnessed? And who's Ooh. the best live performer or live performance that you have ever seen yourself? Wow. Just as a fan. Just wow. as a fan. I think of this. I think of this a lot actually, because because I miss live shows a lot right now. I can pick two that are kind of tied. The one is when I was in ninth or tenth grade, maybe maybe eleventh grade, and it was the Panic at the Disco nine in the afternoon tour, and it, they came to the marquee, and I just remember looking at Brendan Urie and thinking he was like a rock star and just being like, I want to be that one day and I just want to like be on stage. And like, you would be right to say that. Piano. Brendan Urie is an absolute rock oh, star. Oh, that, that yeah. show, that yeah. show, it was just so emotional. It's so around like think panic back at like nine in the afternoon days. That was like prime. The mm -hmm. other one, I mean, it just like sits in my memory because it was like one of the best like musical sonic experiences of my life and it was uh, Casey Musgraves. Wow. It was li like live. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. Everyone, the crowd reacts. Know, for Casey Musgraves, it's her it's her talent, her consistency, her band's incredible. The sonics of the room that it was in, I can't I think it was at Comerica, um, which was incredible. Yeah, but like yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, I'd say Casey Musgraves and then Panic at the Disco, nine in the afternoon tour. The best live performer I saw was probably Black Bear. Mm. He's just incredible in general, and we saw each other at that show. We the did. Most, the the Wait, most recent show? time. Oh, the most recent Yeah, the most May recent one was at the Van Buren. May 1st, 2019 at the Van Buren. And Gash was, was there. That was a wild time. It was great. And then I saw Drake at Talking Stick Resort. Ooh, I've never seen Drake live. Just melt, dude. That that's, was amazing. That's oh, got to be an experience. Gosh. Yeah, I was with my sister, by the way. Shout out to my sister, Lauren. She's an avid watcher of the show, and I told her I was going to shout her out. So while I'm thinking about it, Lauren, love you. Lauren's friends, thank you for tuning in every week. One thing that you and I have in common in terms of being musicians, active musicians out here, is that we both have our college degrees, right? Yes. I have my bachelor's in yeah. journalism, for those that don't know. Congrats. Dude, and my boy awesome. Rio has his master's in elementary education. Yeah. Master's degree over here. So you don't often see that in musicians, at least not active musicians. <laughs> no, People man. tend to think like you have to kind of drop out or, or, or yeah. there's, not, there, there's yeah. no chance of balancing, you know? Yeah. And so that's something that we have in common. What has been the impact of your education in terms mm. of the music? When, when I was first going to apply for my undergraduate degree and I was gonna to go to college, I wanted to study music so badly. And it was one of those situations where I was having to talk with my parents and I was young. I, was, I graduated high school when I was 16. So, so my parents, like I went, I was out on my own at 17 and like living on my own and everything. And so I think my parents may have been a little protective at the time. Love you mom, love you dad. <laughs> but uh, but uh, they, I think they wanted me to have a little bit of a safer journey on the degree path and they're both business people. I'm also very business oriented just cause that's my mindset and I love math and things like that. So yeah. business is where it's at for me. But uh, so I decided to stick with business and I, I was gonna go to Pepperdine and do music or I was gonna go to Seattle University and Pepperdine do music. so beautiful. Like, yeah, dude, it's gorgeous. Sheesh. I love Malibu, it's Sheesh. one of my favorites. Um, but eventually like I just stuck with business but I was just so passionate about music and making it happen that I, I kind of at that moment said, you know what, as long as I get my college degree, I can always get a job, especially if I'm a teacher, I can always be a teacher. And if that's the case, then I can 
work it, like it's it, everything was like people might not recognize it but it was everything was very planned out for me and very structured in my head about what I wanted to do I wanted to have this teaching job so that I could tour on the summer and I could tour on the winter breaks but also because I love kids and it would give me health benefits and salary everything was very calculated yeah. so but it was all it was all something that like that I still don't feel I'm necessarily done with like I'm still trying to make yeah. gains in my education career I'm still trying to make 100%. gains in my music career it never feels any but but uh the impact it's had on my music is I think it's giving me this great balance and work ethic I'm able to pump out songs just the way I was pumping out homework, you know? Um, it's given me a good a good work ethic, I would say, is probably okay. probably the best thing I could take away. Because honestly, whenever I'm do not doing that stuff, all I want to do is music. So I don't think they really correlate yeah. at all. The other thing is my my under my graduate thesis this is probably super boring for everybody. My graduate thesis um, was on the integration of arts in education, and so I, I kind of was able to share some of my experiences about music and teaching and how they kind of like correlate with one another. Um, my the, my first teaching experience ever, the first day I ever taught, it was second graders. Um, we were learning how to count on a number line and I brought in a keyboard and I labeled all the keys like on a number line like zero to ten and I would say okay let's do like two plus eight and they would put their finger on two and then count using the keyboard eight steps and then whatever number they land on that's the that's their answer so sorry if that's boring teaching stuff no, but, no, no. but I thought you know that's that's the one way I integrated I've always find ways to inspire kids to be all that. artistic thank you I appreciate that but yeah I think education is really important but it's not the end-all be-all for people everybody has their own passion their own thing I'm not one who even is somebody to say like you need to go to college you know it's like I needed that for what I wanted to do today and other people need certain things to do what they want to do they need more time or they need more availability and um it's definitely giving me a good work ethic to be able to continue driving same way. dang we got so serious no no i, so, I literally so feel the same way it's a good one yes go vote though register <laughs> definitely vote. go vote. Register vote. Vote. let me fart register vote. Vote. Oh. all right go ahead Registered to vote. Yeah, Registered to vote. <laughs> You're giving us like the best, like most complete answer. I feel the same way. I've always been an advocate of like, look, don't put too many eggs in one thing, like kind of be spread out. Yeah. And it is what it is. It took me a long time to learn that too, because, because I, I always want to do everything. Cause I just like, I, I'm, I love learning. I love it, being interested in stuff. But at some point I kind of teetered off into this dichotomy of music and teaching and so, so it just works for me it's, it's something thing. that works so music and weed that's the world i'm in and okay. let me tell you what they go I'm hand in hand and the the it just is it's the gift that keeps on giving mm. shout yeah. out to weed just right now you had a song release yes right at this moment at this, very at this moment. very moment this ep has dropped and when you guys are watching this the ep will have already dropped for two weeks and i hope you guys loved it i hope you enjoyed it and uh, we're running this one up. So if you're just seeing this now, go run it up. It's called Summer Over. And it's I wrote it over the last two summers and it's just kind of about uh, getting over things. And it's actually one of the more positive records I've ever written. And it's uh, I'm really excited about it because it's way different than anything I've put out. Not in terms of being Rio, but the lyrical content, kind of the direction I'm heading, I think it's really, really uh, a step in the right direction. So I hope, people, yeah. I hope people like it. It's, it's very summery and it kind of transitions you into fall. So you'll feel that summer to October little transitional vibes. music yeah I was yeah. thinking about that I was thinking about y'all yeah, yeah a little bit of transition to get us to the craziness let me ask you this about summer is over is sure. summer are we using that as like a, a deep like a greater meaning like an, like an, like COVID is over yeah, kind sort of. of a thing yeah. I know it's not no course. you want to know it's funny you know what I mean but is it like kind of like symbolic in a greater way and yeah I'd say I'd say it's kind of it is symbolic in a greater way. I mean, I, I didn't come up with that title until very, very recently, to be perfectly honest. I had another title for this record and it just wasn't sitting with me. Do you want to share it? Can you leak it? Or well, no? it was called Happy Birthday, Say It Back, and it was an EP, and I actually dropped it like a few weeks ago as a little couplet. Cause yeah, I, was I think to, I saw I was trying yeah, to raise yeah, money yeah. for some stuff, and so I was trying to like tease it. it was, they were the demos from this record, gotcha. but now I'm releasing the full okay. thing, and it's, uh, it's called Summer Over, and it's really, you know, like this summer we all had to stay inside, and then I remember the the day of my birthday, which was June 29th this year. Don't forget my Happy birthday. Happy related year. birthday. Thanks dude. Thanks dude. But uh, on my birthday, actually, it was the same day that Arizona chose to re-shut down. And I was writing a song that day and I kind of like got in this mindset of like, oh man, we're starting summer over again. We're starting it all over again. Cause we all had to quit our jobs right. back in March. Yeah. We all had to like stay home. And now it just felt like we were starting it all over again. And just, when is this going to end? And it's kind of like summer's over. We're moving on to fall. 
we will get through this kind of thing. And uh, the, the record really is like more positive than the sad boy stuff I've written in the past. It's very like, I mean, it's fun. It's fun to listen. We'll jam it after this. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll it's out it. right now. It's crazy to me. I feel, I feel anxious now. Real quick, before we wrap up, what's the most important piece of music you've ever released, the most meaningful? Honestly, I guess if, you, if this is your first time seeing me or first time meeting me, I want to give you something to experience. Go back to my first real Wiley EP and listen to Young Ghost. I think that's like probably the heart of everything. I think it's like it's it's a, it sounds a lot different than what I put out now, but it's still me. So when you listen to it, you're gonna you're gonna get a good feeling for it, and then I think that'll carry you through the discography. I think that'll let you go. I'm at like forty some songs now, so I'm excited. I'm just like I'm pumping stuff out until people like it. I'm a songwriter. So you, you are know, one like, of the most active guys out here. That is the truth. Yeah. Do you have goals to write songs for other people one day too? So I have I have written a couple songs for some other people. It's really hard, but in addition to the music life and the teaching life, I'm also like trying to get my own studio started and get everything going. But mm -hmm. uh, I've produced some singles for a few people, um, and I just finished an EP for for um, someone. I don't want to like leak it or anything yet because sure. they they're not like done with it. Yet. Fair enough. But uh, find out. Stay tuned. Yeah, find out. I find produced out. a really 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 great EP. Take Juice World and Flyleaf and combine that, and that's what it is. Wow. So so like that's, that's it's it's up. super cool. It's that's super cool. But uh, but I'm also like. Uh, I think I'm gonna be doing a couple songs for some other people in our community, so I'm really excited for that. And we have a song together too. And, oh yeah, that's just, coming out too. Just so you know, I just heard it for the first time, like what, like before we started right, shooting this. That's why he's so happy. And he showed up here. And let me tell you what, I got, we got slappers on the way. Look, <laughs> they're banging. anything coming out of this guy's discography, anything coming out of mine right now, yeah. it's ridiculous. I've you guys, you've seen the Instagram teasers. I know y'all have seen our I'm Instagram teasers. I'm not quite teasers. ready to make any <laughs> announcements yet, but I've got plenty of solo material coming my way as well it's as heat. this it's modern, heat. as we know, who we had on a couple weeks ago. With that being yeah. said, anything else that you want to wrap up? Pitch, maybe no. a social media handle, anything. Do I still follow me on Facebook? Do people say that? I don't know. You me know personally, I'm so like, Twitter, oh, man, it's like at Real Wiley, everything. It's at Real Wiley, everything. And yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for checking us out. We really appreciate it. This modern Real Wiley. We were actually, actually, I do have one thing to say. Before this, we were going to do a show together. It was going to be my CD release for I Hate the Internet, and it was going to be sold out, and it was going to be cool, and we were going to be like cool rock stars. At Valley Bar. For, like, it was going to be great. Gosh, it was going to be so great. Dude, it was, it was going to be packed out but i've never played valley bar too when, when we come back first show that i come back let's do this let's do this let's do this <laughs> modern times real wiley times coming, maybe coming it? times maybe teammate times whenever the cdc says <laughs> yeah it's cool to do so anyways from everyone here at happy hour with marcus this has been another fantastic episode thank you again my friend let me take another quick sip stay tuned for the next episode peace and love Aviation American Gin, you'll actually die from happiness.